Monster Energy AMA Supercross is an exhilarating experience for everyone involved. The audience, loyal to the craft and determination, follow intently, knowing those approaching the gate will give and have given everything they can to get there. We all know that there's a lot of bar banging going on and it's such a brutal sport. It is awesome. Uh, it, it, it's tiring at times, but at the same time, there's a reason, you know, I've done it about 90% of my life. You know, I think that's what keeps us coming back is that adrenaline and that, and that, that feeling we get because we can't get it doing anything else. When I think of Supercross, I think of just a big battle of 20 athletes on the line, just basically going to war with each other. It's almost like a gladiator effect. You know, you have the ring of people around you, the sound of the bikes, the racing experience, and we're all leaving on the even gate. So from the start to the end, it, it really is the best man. The heart rates through the roof, the intensity's like beyond controllable. What really makes Monster Energy Supercross unique really is a 50-50 mashup of equipment and athlete. More like a stick and ball sport than it would be compared to any other motorsport. They don't have seat belts and roll cages around them. Oh, Everything they are doing to prevent a crash is them holding on. Riders averaging 180 to 190 beats per minute heart rate for 20 minutes. And all the travel and testing and training and practice and the entourage that it takes to get each athlete to peak 17 times. And that's all that matters over five months. That is what these riders do in every single race. And because of that equipment and athlete combination, there might be no sports challenge more difficult than this. That's what he struggled with the first year, but now that he knows he can beat him, it's going to be completely different. Webb wins in Houston! Unbelievable! This is Monster Energy Supercross right here. Oh, oh! There are a couple other championships that are out there, but as far as prestige goes, this is the one that everybody turns to. When you're going up to the line, no one's saying anything, but everyone's brain is going a million miles an hour. This was everything I wanted to do. I'm living out my dream. Roxon's feeling good. Well, that's how you paint up a start. What a night. Oh! It's time to bring the action. Like every other major sport across the globe, the COVID-19 pandemic had a profound impact on the 2020 and 2021 Monster Energy AMA Supercross schedule. In 2022, we shift back to normal. Once again, on Saturday nights, in stadiums across the country, fans will get to experience the thrill of Monster Energy Supercross. Returning to the customary schedule of 17 rounds in 18 weeks, Monster Energy Supercross comes roaring back to its traditional home for the season opener, Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California, on January 8th, where Cooper Webb will also be returning, making his second lap around the track as champion. No two champions arrive at a title the same way. The road to glory is unique for every athlete who's able to find it, and even racers who walk the path more than once find each journey different from the last. But with Cooper Webb, there is a constant, unyielding force that fuels his inner fire, a dogged determination to win. Cooper Webb is uh, not a, a BSer, I guess you could say. Try to be a good person, get along and joke around, but when that helmet's on, it's, it's all business, and I feel like I'm a pretty fierce competitor, definitely competitive, and that can get me in trouble sometimes, but uh, overall I feel like it's also what, what makes me the, the man and the, the champion I am. You know, you never quite know exactly what he's thinking, but when he lines up on the start line, I, I know he's going to give it his all. And he's a scrapper, man. He'll fight till the very last second. He's a bad dude. He is a badass guy. He takes what he can get. He's got a chip right there on his shoulder that uh, I think he uses to motivate himself. And he's a, he's a great rider. He's a great champion. And uh, his story is one that I'm watching closely for 2022.
After losing the 450 championship to Eli Tomac, Webb went on the hunt to regain what was once his. And after a rough start to the season, Cooper won back-to-back -back races in Orlando and swept all three races at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Now armed with a 15-point lead and the red plate, Webb closed out the championship with authority, winning the season finale in Salt Lake City. Nowadays, we're all fit, we're all fast, we have great machines, great bikes, and uh, it comes down to sometimes the, the mental side. As a kid, my dad was really hard on me and would put me in pressure situations. So I've always been able to adapt to it pretty well, so now I kind of try to do the same. <laughs> in the media, we hear all the time, why aren't the riders more willing to talk trash? Why aren't they willing to play mind games and send messages to their competition? I think Supercross is so nerve wracking. I don't believe the riders want to add more pressure. They are often trying to calm the moment down. The only rider I know that is mentally strong enough to actually ramp up the situation is Cooper Webb. The way that Cooper's able to get into his competition's head is unrivaled by anyone else. His little comments on the starting line, the way he'll rev at you if you're doing a hot lap, the moves he makes early in races, his line choices, especially when things are going on late in the race, he really knows how to just exploit every guy's mental weakness. He's not the most physical guy out there, he's not the fastest, but he is by far the most confident. We saw him right on a pit board, red plate, and leave that pit board right in front of Ken Roxon to let him know that he was coming for the points lead in the series. And he put it in front of Ken Roxon's gate, and that was, I mean, that's a power move. You want to talk about playing games, it's, it's definitely bold, but I like it. Final round of the year last year, he didn't have to win it, but he put a little extra mustard and aggression on his pass on Roxon to again stamp that he is the top rider in the series. Oh, you. Thank you for doing that. Nice try, bud. It says a lot about Cooper Webb's confidence when he's on to know that his words are not going to come back to haunt him. He doesn't like to come second. If you ask him whether is that good enough, the answer will come back, no, I want to win. And that's what he says every time. And if that involves telling the rest of his competitors that they're not going to have it, that it's his night, that's exactly what he'll do. As the new season approaches, Webb finds himself in an almost completely new environment. He'll no longer be training at the Baker's factory the facility that helped him secure two Supercross titles, igniting a firestorm within the sports endemic media. So yeah, training's a little different this year, uh, riding and training at the 83 compound. I just felt like I needed a change. Uh, I've been just kind of at the point where I didn't really know if, if I wanted to race much longer, to be completely honest. I just wanted to kind of customize my, my whole program a little bit and, and have some, some outsider professionals on the nutrition, the strength, the cardio. This isn't the first guy to leave Aldens. He won't be the last, but he is by far one of the most high profile in recent years because he's the reigning Supercross champion. So now the ball is in his court and I'm sure he wants to prove me wrong because I'm not I'm not 100% sure how things are gonna go. There's nothing like wanting to show that, hey, I, I was right and he's one of those guys that'll do it. So we'll see uh, very shortly uh, how it goes. To me, it's the biggest subplot of the sport. You left a winning program off the bike to do your own thing. But if he doesn't come up with at least a lot of wins, he doesn't need to come up with a title because things happen, but he needs to come up with a lot of wins or there's going to be a lot of questions from the Red Bull KTM guys. I go back to, is it the coach or the rider or the coach or the athlete? And I think we saw what happened with Tom Brady and Belichick. That's the top story of the whole. I mean, this is Brady Bel. This is Brady Belichick, man, in, in our sport. This is going to be the hugest test that he's ever faced in his career. Can you win a Monster Energy Supercross championship without the winningest coach in Supercross history, who helped you revitalize your career? One thing we know about Cooper Webb: when he has a point to prove, he normally proves it. It's a new challenge. It's all on me. I'm holding 100% accountability. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Although plenty has changed for Webb during the offseason, the most important component of victory has not. His unflinching will to win. So a motivated Cooper Webb with something to prove and the confidence of last year's title. If anyone wants it this year, they're going to have to take it from him. It's not going to be easy. He's the guy. And if you're going to be champion in 2022, you're going to have to go through Cooper Webb. The 2022 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Preview Show 
is brought to you in part by Monster Energy, proud sponsor of Monster Energy AMA Supercross, and by Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game five, all for fame, available March 17th. If you were to list the Monster Energy Supercross riders that have changed the sport, that list would undoubtedly include Ken Roxy, a showman, a competitor, a husband, and a father. He's had an impact on the sport that seemingly augments time, where his past continues to be relevant, obscuring a future every fan can't wait to see happen. It was a dream of mine to come to the U.S. and step foot into a stadium like that, and there's just nothing like it. You know, that first year, you're just in awe everywhere you go, and it's a feeling that's hard to describe, but it just, it never gets old. He's just a fun guy to watch and you want to have good things happen for him. I mean, he's been through so much throughout his career. It's just, it's really, really good to see um, good things happen to him. We've seen him change so much over the years. For a while, he was the ultimate alpha male. He was the most cocky. He was the most brash, the most confident. And you can do that when you are one of the highest paid, fastest, most naturally gifted guys to ever ride a motorcycle in this series. However, these last few years and the injuries that have come with it have really humanized Ken. He doesn't hang it out the same way that he used to, but that's also really limited his mistakes. Now he sees the other side of life. I guess besides uh, riding and racing, I have a couple of hobbies, but I've been a dad now since a little bit over 13 months. So this is all still new to us and, and being a family. So that is definitely one of my biggest hobbies at the moment is hanging out with the fam. Next to racing and riding, I love surfing. I try to go as much as I possibly can and get in the ocean and just uh, catch a few waves. A wave of winds came in Indianapolis, where he swept all three main events in the early stages of the schedule. But as the season drew to a close, the points lead he had accumulated did as well. Nowadays, it really isn't enough to only just be consistent. you got to win a lot and be consistent, which is so hard to do, especially with the level of the sport nowadays. So ultimately, I had an underlying problem in my body. So no matter what I did, it, plain and simple, my body was not, wasn't right. And just mentally not being right because of it. Now looking back, I can't even believe that I raced and I can't believe that I won a bunch of races and I can't believe that I even went for a championship all the way, you know, to the last few rounds. He's, the, oh, he's down! Oh my gosh! He's down! He's got to get up! For whatever reason, the first laps of a race and the first couple rounds of a championship, Ken Roxon is unbelievable. Only he knows what happens to him later in the races and later in the series. But without solving that problem, he can maybe inherit the points lead at the right time. For him to go out and grab it from someone, he's got to figure out a way to be as good at the end as he always is at the beginning. The health issues that hinder Ken Roxon now are a result of past injuries that were not only catastrophic, but led to an arduous healing process. A process that is still ongoing, one that Roxon continues to learn from. Ever since I have had those injuries, I, I think five or six times before I jump something or do something instead of just kind of going for it. So you can say that I probably ride a little bit more careful, at least on the outside, but I I think you just learn to become smoother and start becoming more mature, you know. You try to be hyper-focused and prevent things from possibly happening. And right now, uh, I've talked about it before, I've thought about it before, but it's about making it happen. So uh, less talk and uh, more walk for me. It's unfortunate to see some of the criticism that he's gotten in the last few years because everything from that catastrophic injury at Anaheim all those years ago to now has been a rebuilding process and every year he makes a step forward. So I think right now he needs a strike while the iron's hot. This championship is right in front of him. He's got the program and the formula, the experience to get it done. At the level that he's at, that Cooper Webb is at, that Eli Tomac is at, they are not in a position where second place is good enough. It's, it's a failure for the team, for the rider, for the trainer, for the entire program. He is paid to win, he's expected to win, and he needs to win. For the better part of the last decade, Eli Tomac's been driven by one thing, winning Monster Energy Supercross titles. And while his success has brought a certain level of satisfaction, the last 17 months has changed his life in a different manner. The Monster Energy Supercross main event. Oh. <laughs> 
Nowadays, when I'm at home, I'm, uh, I'm the family guy. We have two kids now. We have a daughter that's 17 months old and a new baby boy that's uh, just a month old. So I mean, this, is, this is new for, for both myself and Jessica, uh, but we've been having a blast. This past off season brought another significant change for Eli. Following six years with Monster Energy Kawasaki, Tomac and the team mutually agreed to part ways, leaving Tomac to join the powerhouse Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha team. If you look at the team changes, the big ones that are championship contenders going for stuff, and they change at this point in their career, they are looking for something that is not tangible. He's looking for an entire change, and, and that to me tells me he's plateaued with that equipment at Kawasaki. He didn't come here for money. Um, he came here because he truly thinks that he has a lot more left in the tank. I don't see somebody that won his last championship. I see somebody that has way more in him. It's just a different way of going about the system, and that's really what it comes down to is, is who do I think is going to provide me the best platform, and do I think that everything surrounding that team will provide me an easier way to, to win races. There's a 250 team involved also, so there's a lot of people here, a lot of crew. It's like when you show up here in the morning, there's just a lot going on, so the motivation is totally there to like get going on your day, right? And there's a lot of young guys here. It's just, it's got a good vibe that way. Tomac is joining one of the largest teams in the pits led not only by 450 Pro Motocross champion Dylan Ferrandis, but also 250 regional champions Justin Cooper and Colt Nichols. Ferrandis is going to want to have a better Supercross season in 2022 than in 21, and he's buoyed by his success in the outdoor championship. And then you've got the two younger guys who are the 250 East and West champions. They'll look to Tomac with respect, but they're also going to look and say, you better come up with some results, otherwise I'm going to want your seat. But to have a team and an organization stacked with champions, I think it's a wonderful environment for Tomac to transition to. Taking such a risk at this stage in his career shows how dedicated he is and all the pressure is on him now. I don't think there's any pressure from us at all on him. He puts enough pressure on himself. And not just to win races, but to win every race. Wherever you're at, you're always gonna have that pressure if you're a winner. If you have that winning mentality, I think there's always pressure to go out there and win, and that's what makes you go win too. So I think pressure is a good thing. Regardless of what happens this season, Eli Tomac has left a lasting mark in the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship. Aware of his future in the history books, Eli's perspective is a virtuous one. When I when I think of legacy, I just I think of when I was a kid and who I looked up to, and that was. Ricky, Chad, and James. I loved watching all three of those guys. Like those are the guys I studied and watched. So now that I'm in this position, I just, I hope there's kids looking at me that way. I hope some kids see me that way that I saw those guys. And it's, you know, watch them for technique, watch them how they, how they do their thing in the race, that sort of thing, how they ride. So I hope there's kids out there, you know, watching Eli Tomac. Throughout the last three seasons, no rider has become more synonymous with the Supercross season opener than Justin Barsha, having won three straight dating back to 2019. For the season opener, three in a row for Barsha. A good name for me is, um, obviously people, my nickname's Bam Bam and stuff like that, but honestly, I think Wild Child, um, <laughs> you know, that, that one never really stuck, but for me, that's what I kind of think of my stuff. This team pissed his personality to a T, and they've added his old friend from Geico Honda, Will Hahn, to even further give him a platform to succeed. So I love that the Wild Childs found a home run in the 2022. On the surface, Supercross is composed of a rider and his machine, but behind the scenes, it's a group effort. After a successful 2021 campaign in launching the factory gas gas team, Justin Barsha is brimming with confidence entering year two. I've been at it a long time. You know, I know how to go win races and it was just a really good fit. I was lacking the fun there for a few years and then, you know, coming on to the TLD team. And it's cool. I have my teammates to train with, so that's always fun. You know, they keep me keep me on my toes. The young guys coming up, so that's really good to have competition at the track. We saw how good he was at the first part of last year and even how he would ride through mechanical issues or mistakes like when a shifter got broken at one of the early Houston races. 2021 was the best year he's ever had. He's getting closer to that title. 
And I think with another year on this team, another year on this program, and another year of his maturity and his uh, internal progression, Justin Barsha is in consideration for this championship, and he needs to be looked at that way. I think we saw some highs and lows in qualifying, and that puts you at a disadvantage right off the bat. Sometimes he was like horrible at qualifying, and that gets you a bad gate pick. That puts you in a bad spot to get a start in the heat and therefore not get a good start for the main event. So for Justin Barsha to be a better contender, I think he's got to qualify better. With Justin, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's keeping him calm, um, keeping him positive. You can't treat everybody the same. Each guy needs somebody different, and you do not have to push Justin at all. He puts a lot of pressure and, and pushes himself. So it's really just kind of, hey, at the end of the day, it's over and done with. It's, it's in the past, and so let's move on. When he's having fun and, and he's happy, that's when you get the best Justin Barsha. The vision I have is to be a champion. That's that's what I want. That's the only reason I'm racing anymore. That's the reason, you know, why I work so hard every day. And I keep going back to it. It's the fun, the fun factor of racing. Like that's that's why I started racing as a kid. But now I'm back in a position where, you know, I believe in myself. I believe I can win. I know I have the best team around me. You know, I have my wife with me. It's like a puzzle and all the pieces are coming together and that's why I'm able to compete for championships now because you know I've learned so much throughout the you know the tough times and you know I'm just super grateful for where I'm at right now. An amateur phenom with a meteoric rise in the ranks, Adam Ciancerulo has always enjoyed the spotlight. And while his on-track success has made him a star, his off-track demeanor has propelled him into the perfect spokesperson for the sport. Adam's great for the sport. I, everybody says that and it's because it's true. This rider has been knocked down so many times in some of the most emotional moments, but the way he handles it, gets up no matter what and puts on a smile and carries himself so respectfully. It's why he's a fan favorite, why everybody loves him because you just can't hate a guy who gets knocked down and always gets back up. He tells us what's actually going on. He's very candid with his answers. You know you're going to get Adam's actual thoughts. I look at Vegas now, after winning the Outdoor Motocross Championship, I look at Vegas as something that, that helped me get there. For one, the, the first thing I would say is I'm, I'm a massive fan of this sport. So it's pretty easy for me to wake up, not always, but it's pretty easy for me to wake up every day and and to give it my best and, and try to get the most out of myself when it comes to this sport, just because I, I think it's so cool. The group of riders we have right now, um, and the excitement around the sport, it's like nothing. You know, I've been around the sport a long time, and it's like nothing I've ever seen. With expectations of success, Adam's first two seasons in the 450 class have been filled with injuries and untimely mistakes, leading to a trend of early exits. I mean, there's actually a collective tension among fans when he's leading or, or contending for races. And Adams, you know, he's earned that reputation since he's turned pro and it's unfortunate, but he's too talented not to change that narrative. There's so many things that can go wrong and, and there's so many variables when you go each weekend. So if it's not right, right out of the gate and you're an emotional rider, then you got a long night ahead of you. And he's always pushing that edge and it has led to mistakes and it has led to crashes. And I think those crashes have led to some injuries that have also led to more mistakes if his body gives out. Last year, he was dealing with an arm problem that he hopes to have solved for 2022. So it's a little combination of both physical and mental for Adam. Some riders excel when they put pressure on themselves. I think he's trying to do the opposite, but deep down inside, he knows what he's always wanted to be, which is the champion of this sport. I think it's hard to turn that desire off completely. When he gets six pole positions in a row, really, really clearly he has the speed, clearly he has everything and he just needs to do what we all know he can do, and we need to give him the opportunity to do that. As far as the, the mental mistakes, I have a very simple philosophy when it comes to that. It, I, I know what I do during the week. You know, I eat, sleep, and breathe this sport. I apply myself. I, I do my best to learn from my mistakes. I have a great group of people around me to help me with that. And I go out there on Saturday nights, and I, I try my absolute best. And that's all I do every, every Saturday night. Whether I crash, win, don't win, whatever, uh, I can sleep fine at night because I know I'm doing everything I can. Another young rider with championship potential is Honda HRC's Chase Sexton. He had his skeptics entering 2021, but his unrelenting speed quickly put to rest the doubts of his ability to challenge the elite of the class. Chase Sexton's the young, shiny, flashy toy of the Monster Energy Supercross series. 
He's the guy that has the potential. What if, what if, what if? Him and Adam Cien Cirillo are the what if people in Monster Energy Supercross. Because if what if they hold it all together, they can easily be champions because we see the speed each and every Saturday night. In a class filled with veteran talent, the margin for error is slim. While his skills got him on the podium three times in 2021, untimely crashes and injuries would plague Sexton throughout his season. Oh, the lead is down. Chase Sexton is down. He has crashed and crashed hard. I would say the difference between the 250 and 450 class is just learning the 450 in general. It's, uh, it's a lot heavier, a lot more to handle on the track, especially with just such tight corners and tight rhythm sections, just a lot of power to have on a small track. So for me, just learning the bike throughout those 11 rounds that I raced was a big thing. And I was always changing bike setup and whatnot. And this year going in, I want to have more of a solid setup. He's got the speed. We all see that all the time. But man, how do you stay consistent in 17 races in 18 weekends? They got to figure out that fine line of backing down the speed to get more consistency, but still keeping enough of the speed to beat everybody else or to rip through the packet that get bad starts. And that's the biggest tightrope that these guys got to walk. You got to tell yourself to slow down to go fast. And Chase Sexton right now needs to tell himself that. You know, a lot of guys come into the 450 class and they're just overwhelmed. Each stop after stop and the grind and just learning how to handle that bigger bike. I think the residency program for him was a big benefit. There's less moving parts to worry about. You're staying in the same hotel, you're staying at the same arena, you're staying at the same truck, it's all that. So that stuff was taken out. And I think it allowed him to say, I can do this, I can run with these guys. We didn't see the best of him. We haven't seen the best of Chase Sexton yet. And that's scary if there's competition because he was pretty fast at times last year. Going into this year, I'm kind of going back to what I did before in the 2BD class, having my dad as my practice bike mechanic, and then adding Peter Park to the program. He has a really good history of training motocross and supercross athletes. It's been tough, but I know it's going to pay off in the long run when we're getting into this championship deep. What we saw at Salt Lake City last year at the final round of the championship, I truly believe that Cooper Webb went back at Chase Sexton in that main event to make sure that Chase didn't end the year with a big win so he could carry that momentum into 2022. Chase Sexton might be Cooper Webb's biggest threat for the championship for one reason and one reason alone, mentality. Sexton has the same attitude, that same do everything you can to win mentality that Cooper Webb has, but he might have more speed. I, he's gonna be a Supercross champion. It's not, you know, if he will, it's gonna be when. And I do think he, he could do it this year. On any given weekend, there can only be one winner in Monster Energy Supercross. But sometimes there are riders who, even without a trophy in hand, always garner roars from the crowd. And as the sport inches toward a new era, Aaron Plessinger hopes to be the face in the center of it all. Aaron Plessinger is a Southern Ohio boy that uh, just so happened to be pretty good at racing on two wheels. Aaron Plessinger is the best personality in the pits. It's not debatable, there's no arguments, and that's because his personality is fun off the bike, but the way he rides, he's loose, he's wild, hair's flying out the back, he's he's the best. He's, he's I would say, everybody's favorite. Ah, shoot, do it for Dale, woo! For the first time since 2015, Aaron will ride for a new manufacturer, signing with Red Bull KTM this off season. And while the colors beneath him may change, his distinct personality remains the same and brings a breath of fresh air to the team. I mean, he's, he's been really awesome and I can see our whole team kind of changing. We, we, we can sometimes be a little sticky, you know, we get a little too serious and he definitely lightens the load around here. It was a dream come true and, and it's pretty cool too because my dad, when he won his GNCC championships, he was on factory KTM racing. Unfortunately, that, that heel injury he sustained in, in Daytona set him back probably two years from his professional 450 career. So I'm glad KTM saw that, saw that potential in him because if you looked at just numbers, you're like, why give this guy, you know, one of the most premier rides in the sport, but, but Aaron's earned that. And I'm glad they saw that potential and, and, and give him a shot. Plessinger's move to KTM also means a move to the Baker's factory to train under one of the most successful trainers in the sport, Alden Baker. Being with Alden now, everybody's like, oh, he's, he's so, so gnarly, so this, so that. 
and I've cycled before. I've done gym work before. There are some, some changes for sure, but I like it so far. We're gonna keep doing it. I think KTM is banking on Plessinger hitting just like what happened when they took Cooper Webb from Yamaha a few years ago, and Webb won the title in his first year with the brand. I think the potential for Plessinger is that high. I'm coming in full bore. I'm, I'm ready to win, dude. And you know, I got a taste of the podium uh, last year at Daytona, and the speedways just bring, I don't know, they have a different vibe for me. Uh, stadiums are really, really cool and really awesome, but the, the speedways for me are, I get the chills rolling into there. Another rider vying for best personality in the pits is Malcolm Stewart, whose unbridled speed and style make him an odds-on favorite for a breakout campaign in 2022. Can you copy and paste everything I just said and just change the name to Malcolm Stewart? I don't think it's possible for someone to not like Malcolm Stewart. His personality is infectious. He's always smiling. He's always happy to be at the races. Every rider seems to like him off the track and the riding style on the track is unbelievable. So awesome uh, to be up here and finally get the weight off my shoulders. It's, uh, it's a dream come true. He delivered on the track, he delivered on the podium and the energy in the stadium when you hear from Malcolm and the fans react to him is, is just great. I'd love him to be up there every weekend just so we can get that kind of energy. It's, it's, it's what Monster Energy Supercross is all about, really. Malcolm has had a journeyman's career in the premier class. And this upcoming season will provide a stability that he's unaccustomed to after signing a two-year deal with Rockstar Energy Husqvarna this offseason. I wouldn't say a relief, but it's more like you get what you deserve. You know, these one-year deals, you always have it in the back of your mind. That's like, man, like you're halfway through Supercross season. You're like, man, I really got to make it work for outdoors or whatever. I got to make these last races count. So I finally got that opportunity for a, a two-year deal, which I didn't know it was going to happen. And then they were like, no, nah, bro, we want you for two years. I was like, what? His move to Rockstar Energy Husqvarna will also signify a move to the Baker's factory, where, like Aaron, he'll train under the tutelage of Alden Baker. Well, I think with Malcolm and, and Aaron joining the program, it's always exciting when you've got new guys. The facility, the training, the whole combination is, is all kind of new to them. And, and even with me, I'm trying to learn where they're at, where their mentality's at, how they approach things so that I can work the program that'll develop them the best possible ways. Alden's workload is so intense. The diet is very strict. The workload is seven days a week. You're held accountable. You're thinking about these things at all times. The fact that Malcolm will have Aaron there and the fact that Aaron will have Malcolm there and those two can break the tension a little bit, that could be a big thing that both guys have that keeps them motivated through these really long boot camps. <laughs> All of those championships that Alden Baker has, they mean something to these guys. And I think it's, uh, it's a commitment by Malcolm to get better, to get himself all in on this program. And I think he's to be applauded for it. And I think between Eldon Baker and that new team and the two-year deal that he got from Husky, I think Malcolm Stewart's in a very good place for 2022. You're looking at the board, you're starting to see my name pop up here and there. I kind of feel that I'm under the radar a little bit. I kind of like that. So I, I kind of I'm kind of keeping myself in the dark a little bit. And then whenever the lights turn on, it's, it's go time. Être audacieux, c'est être acclamé. To be bold is to be acclaimed. At the top level of any athletic competition, all the athletes are giving all of themselves in pursuit of a goal. But somehow it seems like Dylan Ferrandis is somehow giving even more. He's even more dedicated to his craft than his competitors. I actually think he's the hungriest rider in this entire field. He's at the track later than anybody else. I can tell you from personal experience, seeing him there when the tracks are closing down, he's still putting in laps. He's not arrogant. He doesn't underestimate himself. I think he has one expectation, and that's all he does. He wakes up, he eats, he rides, he trains, he sleeps, and he repeats. That, that's, that's his life. But before was this eye, and this eye make that small difference make the, the, the gym more difficult to do. There's nobody that wants it more. He came to this country for one thing. He didn't come to this country for second place. 
I think it's uh, different from many riders because uh, I come from France, so it's very far away from the uh, US. And uh, I grew up with that dream of uh, just riding a huge uh, stadium full of people and, uh, and all the crowd yelling for the rider. And that is really a, a dream come true. And for me, it's just everything for me. And uh, I dedicate my life for, for, for this. While success in 2021 came almost immediately, he managed just seventh in the points by season's end. Showing the resilience that has fortified his entire career, Ferrandis found his footing in pro motocross, winning the 450 championship. Now the question remains, will it translate to success in Monster Energy Supercross in 2022? Bringing that confidence into Supercross is really going to help him. I personally feel if he gets off to a good start this year, he's going to take this thing to the end because he has so much passion. You can see the emotion that he brings. He also isn't scared to ride that edge, you know, and sometimes you got to be willing to get out of that comfort zone. And Dylan is one of those guys. Last year, he was like this under the radar fast guy, wasn't he? We look at his times and you're like, oh my goodness. And yet, we weren't, no one was really talking about him because he got in his own way every single time. And now he's gone and got an outdoors title under his belt and he knows who he is. Just saying. A rider's personality off the track rarely translates into how they ride on the track. That's far from the case for New Mexico's Jason Anderson. It's when he hits a really wild section and the bike gets out from underneath him and he still brings it back around and rides it out, that's Jason. Since making his 450 debut, Jason Anderson has only ridden for one team, Rockstar Energy Husqvarna. But after nearly a decade with the team, Jason made the switch to Monster Energy Kawasaki and one of the biggest moves of the off season. Right now I've been working with him for, I think I'm going on like two months right now. And it's been, to be honest, I get along with everyone. They all keep it real, they all hold it down, they all work hard. For us, we pleasantly surprised at how much thought that he puts into everything. He'll go riding for the day, and then a couple of days later, he'll call up some of the guys and he'll talk about the things that he's been thinking about and what he would like to try. And we're super excited for that kind of approach. Everyone's like, dude, they're super corporate and outside looking in. Yeah, dude, we all wear the pit shirts, we all have the collar, we all wear the monster hat. But to be honest, on the inside, these dudes are joking around just as much as any other team. This shallow rut is just a little weird than on the three right here. You definitely have to take your time. Take your time. As fun-loving as things might seem, there's a pressure looming over the green Kawasaki tents that everyone is aware of. If you get hired at Monster Energy Kawasaki, there's two things you need to know. They expect you to win the Supercross Championship, and they expect you to ride the motorcycle that they gave you, how they gave it to you. Yeah, they will work with you on some things to get the bike better suited to your riding style, but realistically, they know what they want the bike to do, and they're gonna hope that you just stick with that and not stray too far from the path. That dynamic, that shift into that seat, is going to be an absolutely fascinating one to watch because the rider that he's replacing, Eli Toma, they're very different characters. So how is the team going to then take Jason on and go, okay, this isn't Eli Toma, this is a different guy. As he enters his eighth season in the premier class, the crafty veteran knows his time is now. Including me, you know, there's a couple old heads in the class. You know, I think that's what we are now. We're for, uh, some veteran guys. And, and then you got these young guys that are coming in and trying to steal the thunder. It's going to be the Sexton, the ACs, Shimoda, even the Lawrences. You know, you can see that coming from a mile away. Pretty soon you're going to have Kenny, Tomac, Marvin. Guys of that level are staying in it longer. And I honestly feel like I kind of have something to prove, even being at the part I am at in my career. So as far as expectations, I don't know about a number as far as like, championship and stuff like that. My goal is just to go weekend to weekend and try and do my best, but I definitely want to win a couple races and even more than a couple, if I'm being honest. I think if you're Jason Anderson, it's a smart move. Uh, you know you're going to go there with very capable hands and a very capable motorcycle. And I think if you're Kawasaki, you want someone that's going to represent a company in a good light. That's certainly Jason Anderson. He's going to fit in well with the Monster Energy guys, Team Fried and everything else. I just don't know if Jason Anderson is all in. You know what I mean? You have to live it day in and day out. You have to be miserable to an extent to be a 450 Supercross champion. And I gotta be honest, I don't know if Jason Anderson wants to be miserable. Someone that certainly isn't too miserable to make his way to the starting gate is Red Bull KTM's Marvin Muskan. Yeah, I'm sitting here looking out 
I have a nice view of uh, Angel Stadium where uh, we always start the championship. Feels really good just to say that and to, to know that I've been part of it for uh, now like 12 years since I'm here in America. Marvin's future in the sport will certainly be shorter than his past. But despite turning 32 before the opener, his excitement for another season hasn't wavered. Depending on who you talk to, this is the beginning of the end for one of the greatest riders to ever come from France. You know, as soon as I say his time has passed, Luskan with the win in Anaheim. Second to none, he does things at the test track sometimes. It's so, it's so nice to watch, he's so creative. I just think to myself, man, it would be cool just to do that one time, you know, just to feel what that feels like. After signing a unique Supercross-only contract, Marvin enters 2022 with a newfound confidence that this could finally be his year. I think every rider, they, they know what I'm capable of, you know, technique-wise, but also physical-wise, because I show again in Salt Lake City, you know, high altitude. It was hard physically, but I was uh, strong for the whole 20-minute model. I think the rider, they, they know I've been, I've been here for 12 years, so they know what I'm capable of. From what I've seen the last few weeks, it's been really, really impressive. And if we raced tomorrow in Anaheim, and they told me, hey, who are you going to put your money on on your three guys to win? It would be tough for me, huh? but I would nearly, nearly bet on Marvin. Whoever you're betting on, whoever you're a fan of, the gate drops at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on January 8th on CNBC and the Peacock app. The 2022 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Preview Show is brought to you in part by Monster Energy, proud sponsor of Monster Energy AMA Supercross, and by Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game five, all for fame, available March 17th. Each rider's journey to the Supercross starting gates is different. Some face more hardship than others. Joey Savacci of the Rocky Mountain ATV MC KTM WPS team knows this all too well. These last few years have been pretty difficult for Joey after a pretty severe ankle injury down in Australia. It almost cost him his entire career. I was standing on the side of the track when it happened and it was bad. To then get back to the United States to go through all the therapy that he did, the multiple surgeries, to be back on the track was really just about finding himself again. Since I turned pro I'm in the 450 class, I've been on a different brand every year so far. On top of that, the last time I'd ridden a supercross track, I was carried off on a stretcher. So I was really battling a lot of demons. And the first thing I noticed when I started back riding this year was after having a whole year under my belt, the freedom that I felt immediately getting back on the motorcycle this year has been unexplainable. There have been multiple times that I've interviewed him after the race. I'm like, hey, you realize like you're that good, right? And he's like, well, and I'm like, no, dude, you're pretty damn good. Every rider at the top level of this sport, at some point in the 250 class, Savachi has run with, he's beaten them. I guess this all leads to untapped potential. The Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship, a sport of finesse and fury, a delicate balance of volatile substances. Over the course of 17 rounds, the potential storylines will unfold in front of thousands of adoring fans and on televisions across the world. The fire, stoked through months of training, erupts on January 8th at Angel Stadium in Anaheim, California, running its course over the next five months until only one rider is left standing.